Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze how Fabinho's return to midfield has improved Liverpool's form ahead of their big clash against Arsenal. First, we're going to look to the board to analyze how Liverpool do look to attack. And what you end up seeing is that they do start most often in a 4-3-3, with the fullbacks pushing forward and Mane and Salah tucking into central positions. Robertson and Alexander-Arnold are a threat in those advanced wide areas, as they are able to create chances through their deliveries. What you end up seeing from Mane is that he does often tuck into those central areas with Robertson pushing forward, but we do see variation from Salah and Alexander-Arnold. There are times where Salah does tuck in narrow and Alexander-Arnold pushes forward down the touchline, but you can see Salah shifting out to the touchline to drag opponents out of position, where he's able to drop the ball back to Alexander-Arnold in a narrow inside pocket, where he's able to pick out runners towards the back post. In that midfield zone, the Shuttlers are given the license to push forward. Wijnaldum will push higher up the pitch to make late runs into the box, while Thiago may sit a bit deeper to help control the tempo of the game. But it's Fabinho who holds the center of the pitch, and he's often responsible to shift laterally to cover the space that Alexander-Arnold and Robertson leave available. When we look to an example of Fabinho providing cover out in the wider areas, it's Nkunku looking to run at Alexander-Arnold who does struggle in 1v1s, but what we see is Fabinho shifting across in towards the right channel, closing down Nkunku, and then winning possession to help Liverpool push forward. Ultimately, it's Liverpool in more of a triangle shape with Fabinho just ahead of the center backs. And while the center backs can shift across as well to provide cover, if they are facing a center forward partnership, then it's Fabinho who has to shift across to provide that cover for the fullbacks. If the opposing side center forward drops deeper, then Fabinho can pick him up if the center back doesn't stick tight on his marker. What you've seen from Fabinho since his return to the Liverpool midfield is that he's been able to break up play through various routes, whether it be stepping into challenges, intercepting passes, or covering for his teammates. He's either responsible for picking up the opposing side's number 10 as witnessed against Wolves when he tracked the movement of Pedro Neto, or you can see him pushing higher up the pitch to close down the opposing side's deepest lying midfielder. But what we've seen from Liverpool in these two games is that Fabinho has played a key role in ensuring that Liverpool aren't overrun in that central area. This is going to be extremely important against Arsenal due to the fact that when they do play well, it's Lacazette dropping off deeper to link play with his teammates. And more specifically, in their recent comeback against West Ham, it was Martin Odegaard who consistently found space in between the lines between Declan Rice and Suchek to receive possession to link play with his teammates. That's where Fabinho is going to have to play a key role tracking that movement of Odegaard and Lacazette dropping deeper if the center backs don't stick tight. And as we could see in previous games against Leipzig and Wolves, Fabinho played a key role in ensuring that Liverpool were able to dominate that central area. Here you could see why Naldum and Robertson closing down Adama dribbling backwards on the touchline and focus on Fabinho's position with Neto just in behind Wijnaldum. But with Neto looking to make a run across Robertson, you see Mane and Fabinho shifting over to help close down Adama. Once the Wolves attacking player dribbles central, he's closed down by Wijnaldum, Mane, and Fabinho. What happens next is that as he dribbles towards Mane, he brushes off Wijnaldum, but it's Fabinho who steps in to win possession. Here you can see Fabinho on the ball in midfield with Ruben Neves and William Jose looking to close him down, and Wijnaldum as his sole passing option. Fabinho looks to push forward and he ends up losing control of the ball and as Wolves look to push forward what you end up seeing is William Jose dropping off the ball to Adama who is forced back, Wijnaldum tracking the movement of the Wolves forward and Fabinho holding his position in midfield. Adama looks to drift central but it's Fabinho who cuts off the passing lane into Ruben Neves and that's how he's able to rectify his error to ensure that Adama can't run at the back line. From an Alexander-Arnold throw directed to Jota ahead of Tyler Adams, you have Fabinho tracking the movement of Poulsen. What happens next is that Jota looks to direct the ball into the path of Sadio Mane, and when that ball is not into his path, it's Sabitzer who clears it into the path of Forsberg and Poulsen, but it's Fabinho who steps forward to win possession for Liverpool, and he's able to drop the ball off to Thiago, who switches play out to Robertson. Here you can see Nkunku receiving the ball towards the left touchline, with Omo looking to drop into the gap between Thiago ahead of the ball and Fabinho holding the center of the pitch. 
When Nkunku plays the ball into Olmo, he's instantly closed down by Fabinho, and Thiago looks to provide cover to make it a 2v1 overload. Thiago's able to step into the challenge due to Fabinho's pressure, and Wijnaldum breaks forward. Here you could see Boli intercepting Thiago's forward pass, with Phillips looking to step towards Johnny, Neto in a pocket of space, and Fabinho holding the center of the pitch between the Liverpool center backs. When Boldy plays the ball to Neto, he's able to let it roll across his body to bypass Phillips, but it's Fabinho who steps in to provide cover. That results in Fabinho stepping across Neto to win possession as he is fouled. If we look to another example, it's Thiago closed down by three Wolves players with Wijnaldum as his sole passing option ahead of Ruben Neves. When Thiago looks to play that pass to his Liverpool teammate, it bypasses him and falls to Adama Traore, who looks to poke the ball back across Wijnaldum to Ruben Neves, but look at Fabinho's positioning in between the Liverpool centre-backs. When Ruben Neves receives the ball, he's able to dribble across Wijnaldum, but it's Fabinho who steps forward to apply pressure on Adama, who does receive Ruben Neves' pass. This is key because Fabinho doesn't want Adama to receive the ball to turn forward, and he steps in to win possession. Here we can see Liverpool's press on full display with Jota dropping off Cody, Wijnaldum stepping to Moutinho, but no one stepping to Ruben Neves. Cody is able to play a diagonal ball out to Johnny, and it goes over Thiago, but when Johnny looks to chest the ball into the path of Neto, look at Fabinho tracking the movement of the Wolves attacking midfielder. When the wing back chests the ball into the path of Neto, it's Fabinho who steps forward to poke the ball back to the center backs. With Arsenal most likely to play a 3-4-3 that shifts into a 5-4-1 out of possession, Fabinho's role will be key here, because with the fullbacks pushing back the wing backs that leave space in the wider areas for the likes of Aubameyang or Pepe or even Martinelli and Saka to break into the channels, and that's where Fabinho will be responsible to shift across to ensure that the center backs aren't pulled out of position. Meanwhile, from an attacking sense, with Liverpool expected to dominate possession, if they peg back Arsenal's 5-4-1, Fabinho could be the key man responsible for breaking defensive lines and potentially being a goal threat from distance, which does force Lacazette or Aubameyang, whoever's playing in the central role, to drop deeper to close him down. While far from fit, Fabinho's inclusion in Liverpool's midfield makes them a much better side, and from a tactical perspective, he could play the defining role in the game's outcome. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.